Welcome to the Taylor Method for Pain-Free Living, a podcast that features enlightening conversations with experts in the medical field that helps to improve the health and well-being of those suffering from chronic pain due to injury. Learn from leading authorities the questions you should be asking to experience pain-free living. Hosted by father and son, Dr. Derek Taylor and Dr. Hudson Taylor, and joined by industry professionals in the health field, including doctors of integrative medicine and personal injury attorneys. Enjoy well-rounded and informative conversations to help you get out of pain while achieving optimal wellness. Dr. Derek Taylor and Dr. Hudson Taylor are the doctors of Taylor Chiropractic and Laser Center in Florida and California. Both father and son duo have earned respect and a solid reputation for successfully helping people transform their lives by assisting them to discover the hidden causes of their painful health challenges, leading them to experience the resolution of their problems using the Taylor Method. Tune in each week to learn about the Taylor Method, Dr. Taylor's proprietary technology that looks at the whole person and identifies the root cause of pain while facilitating natural healing and helps to restore the body to optimal wellness without using drug injections or surgery. Well, welcome to the Taylor Method for Pain-Free Living podcast. I'm here with our special guest, April Torres, holistic healthcare practitioner. Uh, April has been helping patients over the past 10 years, and I'm excited about the topic we're uh, going to be talking about, April, and that is the damaging effects of parasites on people's health. Um, how, how we You were on our show before. You were, I think you were our first guest. We didn't have it. We weren't doing... Um, we weren't doing Zoom calls at the time, so it was more like an audio. So I'm glad that you were able to join us again, not making time out of your busy schedule so we can do this um, through video. So so tell us about uh, just the whole topic of uh, parasites and how it affects people's health and how you kind of got into that and kind of have niched into that area. So, Well, thank you again for having me. It's a joy to be here. Um, as far as parasitology, it's kind of a guilty pleasure kind of thing for me. Um, it's, um, it, it is more prolific than we could possibly imagine. Um, whenever I speak to my clients, it's one of those, um, it's one of those things that everybody thinks is like a third world world country issue. Um, and obviously, when you go into conventional medicine, one of the first things they ask you is, have you been out of the country? Have you been on a cruise? And, and my response to that is, do parasites need a passport? Um, is Trump's wall really going to keep them out? Um, if we're eating organic, non-GMO, farm-to-table food with no pesticides, then obviously there's going to be pests. So I think that just the, the really simplistic but literal reality that our microbiome has trillions, trillions of, of, of cells. Um, we have protozas, um, we have amoebas, and we actually need them. Um, our body functions off of 10% bad to 90% good. We can function off of 20% bad to 80% good, but we're really close to that line uh, where I feel like any other environmental stressors may come in can take us over the edge on that. So it's a universal issue. We have billions of, of parasites in us. We need them. Um, it's just when that balance of 90-10 uh, stretching 80, 20 become jeopardized, we start, it, it starts becoming very systemic and we become very, um, symptomatic for sure. Sorry. You, it sounds like you're saying then that just like we have good and bad bacteria in our gut, are you saying that's the same case for these microbes when it comes to parasites? We actually, yes, we actually okay. do need um, we do need some good parasites. Some parasites are good for us, but there's so many contingency factors um, in how each person processes through. For instance, um, what, what is your blood type? O blood type 
um, they seem to have a very strong um, acid level in their gut. And we don't like to think about it because it's kind of nasty, but the bottom line is parasites are meaty. And someone like myself, I'm an A positive blood type. My body does not break down um, um, protein well at all. So I have to take a broad spectrum digestive enzyme daily in order to be able to assimilate, utilize, and eliminate excess of protein. Um, whereas an O, they may rarely feel symptomatic from parasitic bowl um, imbalance because their guts are primed naturally and they're ready to go. So it's, it's just, it's all just very, very interesting. And it's, it's very multifaceted for sure. Yeah. So working with patients over the years, what are some of the common symptoms that they have that are indicative that they are dealing with a parasite and that's causing them health issues? Sure. Well, it's very broad as you can imagine, but I would say atypical things would be um, if you look out and you see those little line floaters and you kind of chase them through the room, um, grinding your teeth at night, actually snoring. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the term, the witching hour. And that's like when the sun sets between seven and eight, all of the kids kind of go crazy. Fun fact would be parasites are nocturnal. And so getting hungry after dinner, six, seven o'clock at night, um, kids getting amped up more than normal before bedtime, becoming hungry, um, being constipated. Actually, anemia is huge because when you're looking at tapeworms and tapeworms have the potential to get up to actually 49 feet in the human body, which is even hard to fathom. Um, but when you have something of, of that substance, um, that is eating all of your macro and micronutrients. It's peeing and pooping in your system, leaving you acidic and not alkaline. And parasites can reproduce anywhere from 10,000 eggs a day to 150,000 eggs a day. And Dr. Taylor, if you have trillions of these in your system, you can come into a, an imbalance very quickly. And so, um, headaches, um, fatigue and, and malaise, um, joint pain, um, not being able to recover um, after illness, um, uh, muscle aches, um, migraines and headaches, ear ringing, tinnitus, um, all of those eye twitching, all of these things can, can, be, can be evidences of there being an imbalance. Now, this is the other thing to think through when you're thinking about symptoms. Um, each person um, has holes and glitches in their armor. And so let's say you're arthritic and um, your, your DNA is kind of naturally prone to lean that way. And you have an over um, populace, we'll call it, of parasite activity. You may all of a sudden ache from head to toe. Why? Parasites love to conjugate toward um, decomposition. And we all know that any dis-ease under the skin is the, the, the body breaking down. And so the other part about this that is very interesting, I think Dr. Taylor is, is this, if it is true that a parasite eats your bionutrient and it pees and poops and it lays eggs, it can go from a larvae to an adult within 90 days. So parasitical cleanses that are 12 days and 14 days, maybe a couple weeks, in my opinion, are just not thorough enough. Uh, if, if I'm gonna go in and we're gonna attack this um, and support the body, I, I, I feel personally, we need to do it as long-term as the gestation could be. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and so the other question that I always seem to get asked is if, if a parasite could be a host and which, which mamas uh, in my, in my clinic don't like to hear this. I personally, it's, it's a little bit repulsive, but if you think of it this way, babies are parasites, right? 
they leach our bionutrients. We get cravings because our body is deficient in certain things. That's, that's very normal. We hear crazy stories, right? Ladies wanting to eat soap or, or drink gasoline or oil, which is just absurd. Um, but it's the body telling on itself. And so as these parasite colonies regenerate and they all have certain species like certain things, it's not abnormal for you to have really odd cravings. Um, so those are kind of all of the really interesting nuances. Um, I've had clients lose hair. I've had clients with skin rashes. I, I had one client that came in that looked like she took a meat cleaver to her forearms, uh, pussing and oozing and skin. So as, 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 as long as the day is, is could the symptoms be? Um, I don't find them to be... Um, I don't find them to be in, incredibly defined as this list of, but I do find that if you know where your weakest links are, whether you've had injuries, whether you have an autoimmune, I believe that symptoms can show up in, in whatever those weaknesses of the body are. Now, why are some patients more prone to, I mean, if we're exposed to these parasites and the body keeps them at check, what are some of the things that allows the parasite to take over in somebody's body and cause health issues? I think it's, it's number one gut. I think gut is the number one issue for everyone. You have the gut brain connection where the head goes, the body follows. Um, and so keeping that microbiome balanced is key. Um, we need to be, to be actively priming our individual system to be able to, um, to navigate well the, the environmental stressors that come in. Um, oftentimes when, when you don't have a biome that is effective and optimizing um, its capacity, any, all is fair in love and war, anything at that point can happen. Um, I do feel that blood types, um, interestingly enough, do have um, some influence on um, being able to maintain a good, healthy gut biome. Um, some of us have to work harder than others. Um, and number two, I think that it has a lot to do with um, our immune system. Um, our immune system needs to be primed and ready to go as these environmental stressors change. Um, and I think a lot of us, in the, especially in the last two to three years, I think that we're more compromised than we think. And we're accepting, we're more accepting of symptoms um, as the norm instead of it's instead of striving to optimize our health um, to its fullest capacity. So let's say somebody does have a parasitic infection, just strengthening the immune system is probably not going to be enough to get rid of them and to eradicate the body of them, or is it? Um, I think I, I, when I work with people, the, some of the very first things that I do is a parasite cleanse. Um, and, and there's not a one-stop shop for that. I mean, there's all kinds of wormwood and oil of oregano and, and we've heard all the herbs and the stories and the homeopathics, but the bottom line is this, if it's good, if it's holistic, if it's natural, organic, non-GMO, then it's good for you and I, right? Well, no, just because it's good doesn't mean that my body can assimilate, utilize the, the bionutrients to eliminate and that's a lot of the that's a lot of the issue. Some of these things that we're introducing ourselves to, number one, it's too much. Um, too much of anything is too much. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Um, so I feel like a lot of people on one side of the spectrum are striving to to clean house, right? Spring clean, and the, I feel that they we can sometimes clean. We can be too clean inside. And then I feel there's the other side of the spectrum where people just go with the flow and um, we kind of just um, are more, instead of being proactive, we're reactive. And so I feel that, that we need to figure out 
how to customize protocols so people's bodies can get the bionutrients that they need that's going to adequately equip them to be able to cleanse at a proficient level. So let's say somebody, one of our listeners is hearing this show and they're saying, wow, I, I bet you I have parasites after just what I heard April say. What is what happens? They 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 when they meet with you, tell us the typical what happened, what what do they go through, what kind of initial testing, and then typically what tell us about the programs that you use and how long does it take to eradicate the body of these parasites? Sure. sure. Well, I use I use bioresonant feedback and and it's just it's in its very simplest form. Um, everything in creation has a, a, an electrical, a frequency blueprint. Um, and I basically run the bioscan. My job is to equip the individual. I don't diagnose and I don't treat um, from that standpoint. But what I'm able to do is see if your body has the required frequency that's needed in order for your body to become a powerhouse to heal. And so what I would do is I would run a parasitical analysis. Um, I would see what areas of your body need support through bioresonant feedback and bionutrients. Um, and then we would put a protocol to together to support that. And um, that would help your body optimize for optimal cleansing. Okay. And then how long does that usually take to get rid of a parasite? Your patient. Well, I, I, all of the studying um, that I have done, the doctors that I have worked with, I, I'm really comfortable with a 90 day cleanse. And, you know, there's the phase one where you want to prime the system. You want to make sure that you're having two, at least two BMs a day. Um, you want to make sure you're drinking half of your body wa- um, weight in water. You want to make sure you're doing 20 minutes of fun, sweaty activity a day. You want to get the body moving in a forward projection. Um, so then when we do introduce on the eighth day, um, we start introducing the, the, the support for um, the parasite cleanse. The body's already in a trajectory of elimination because the worst thing in the world is to have a parasite cleanse start. You're not eliminating appropriately. You're not what I call primed. And all of a sudden you've got herxing, which is your body's um, die off producing symptoms. So you have symptoms like, you know, potential vomiting and diarrhea and hives and headaches and insomnia and nauseousness. So in order to kind of um, curtail those and be preventative, you kind of want to make sure that you're eliminating pretty consistently before you get to that phase. So I feel that's very important. Uh, and then I do um, definitely do a, a um, 12 week cleanse at that point. Now, the goal is never to be rid of them. We need them. The goal is to be within that margin of 10% good, bad, excuse me, bad to 90% good. And, and often people will say to me, well, how do I know that? And I said, well, we really don't know that. I, I, I mean, I was just reading this week and there's over 80,000 different species of protosa that they can find, which is just a one cell parasite. Um, Toxoplasma gande, um, that's a brain parasite. Probably I would say 10 years ago, statistics were out that one in three people had this Toxoplasma gande parasite in the brain that was dormant. And now as of today, statistics are one out of every two. And so I look at those kind of statistics, Dr. Taylor, and I say to myself, it's kind of important that we we know what we're dealing with. If you were to take your DNA, we were to spread it out on a table, 75% of us would be, our DNA would be non-human to only 25% human. We so focus on the human part of us I'm screaming from the mountaintops. We need to start focusing on the 75% that we don't really know a lot about. Um, And every day, you know, people are finding more species, but this is the beautiful thing. When your body is primed and when your body is equipped with a strong immune system, 
and we get invaded in our environment with all of these different elements, our body should be primed to the point where it's able to say, you know what, that's a keeper. I need this mold from that. I actually need this bacteria from this one. I don't need that. We Trillions of tra transactions per millisecond happen like this. And our bodies give and taking constantly. But when we're not able to do that, and a lot of my clients will say to me, April, I feel stuck. That's exactly how you feel. And, and honestly, we know it. Oftentimes we know that we are in that stuck area. And it's kind of just being able to, to put out the, the, the bait and hook and be able to say, okay, am I really willing to take the next step to do this? You know, a lot of people will say to me, and I have to be honest, I have had people, I have seen with my eyes, people pass worms that are a foot, a foot and a half long. Um, some of them you see, some of them you don't see, some of them are microscopic. Um, you look at salmonella and toxoplasma gondii, um, those would be microscopic things that you wouldn't normally really see. Then you have, you know, the protosis like pinworms that normally form around the anus. And if kids' bums get incredibly itchy at night, um, that's, that, that's a good sign that they may have pinworms. Uh, I had one client that, that they were raised in Colombia and, um, and they would, mom would stick scallions in the kids' bums and leave them there for 10, 15 minutes. And, and when she would extract them, they would be full of the parasites. And this is the other thing that's interesting to me. In all of the globe, we are the only country that does not talk um, about parasites. We just don't talk about, it's, it's like it's some third world country issue. And it's really not. Um, and I think that this whole COVID-19 scare, I think people are really starting to take notice um, and starting to understand that if this is true, if a parasite is a host and it can host virus and bacteria and cancer and Lyme and it's peeing and pooping and it's laying eggs up to 10,000 to 150,000 per day in my body, I can't get over this doc. I can't, I can't find my way out. Could it be we're knocking on the wrong doors? Could it be that we need to have a more preventative mindset and, and tuning our bodies into um, being able to go into these environments and navigating it in a way that doesn't leave our body being the victim of the parasite? Um, I feel like we're mo more of the victim and they're the host than we're the host and they're the victim. So I think we just need to kind of change our thinking on that a little bit and be more proactive than reactive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm in agreement. I, we're focusing on the wrong things. Um, how, how would you say your let's say somebody, they go to a third world country, they come back, they discover they have parasites and they're saying, I'm thinking of just going to my medical doctor and getting on the anti-parasitical medications, um, but I'm also considering what you're doing on a natural approach. How, do they do both programs do the same things or how would yours differ from the pharmaceuticals that are out there to eradicate the body of parasites? That's a great question. The last I heard, and, and you know, I, I could be off on this, but when you're talking about big pharma, um, the last that I heard, they have about five different prescriptions um, for about a, for a handful of, of antiparasiticals. Um, how broad of spectrum that covers, I, I really wouldn't be able to answer that and give clarity on that. Um, but I, as far as number one, if you're going and you know you're going out of the country, I always encourage my clients to start a protocol a month before you go and continue it while you're there and then um, complete it at the, the full 90 days, you know, whether you come back. Now, if you're going to be there an extended period of time, I encourage them to be on a parasite cleanse the whole time they're gone. And then after they come home for another three months. Now, can it work integratively 
um, with Western medicine, I would not see why that would be an issue, um, but that would definitely be something they would want to run by their doctor as well. So um, would you say using a holistic herbal approach is probably going to be a little less, a little easier on the body, I would imagine, compared to pharmaceuticals? Well, I, again, does it take, does it take longer? Um, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, um, you know, people are on the trying to decide, well, should I just like take an like take a full spectrum antibiotic or just get on probiotics? Is that sure. is it the same thing? Is this the same type of comparison, would you say? Or well, no, when you're dealing with herbs and homeopathics and things like that. You, the goal in, in, in naturopathy, the goal in homeopathy is always to equip the body because the body is the intelligent design. The body was created um, by the Lord to be able to navigate these stressors in a very personal case by case um, instant. Um, I think when you do pharma pharmaceuticals, from what I understand, you're kind of directing it toward a handful of you. And I'm more of a broad spectrum girl. If I'm gonna be going to another country or even if I'm not, and I'm just working out in my garden in the backyard, um, I'm going to want to equip myself as much as I can from a broad spectrum, because let's face it, none of us know what we're walking into it. None, none of us know what you know, what that's going to look like. I, I just heard this last week, a case about a lady who did go overseas and went to some remote Island and got literally got parasites in her feet from walking on the beach and they broke through the skin. And she ended up having to be in a third world country being hospitalized. And, um, it, it was not a pretty thing. So, um, the other question is if you do an herbal, supplementation for for um reboot and balance does that is is that like the 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 armor for everything well no and it's it's going to depend on your immune system as well so not only is do you want to support the body to be a powerhouse to heal but you want to have the immune system that has the right directives that knows how to navigate and sort through all of the stressors as well yeah. So instead of taking like a pharmacy, it's like the alternative versus conventional route. You either take something to control a symptom or to kill something, or you give the body what it needs to help it do what it does best and fighting it on its own. Is that what your, your, is that the difference in the difference of, of approaches of Absolutely. attacking parasites from a conventional versus an alternative route? And I would imagine that's going to be, you know, that's going to, what you're doing is going to be uh, easier on the body because every pharmaceutical has a side effect that we, and you're also, we don't know which parasite basically is causing the issue. If you're using more of a broad spectrum approach, then it kind of covers all the gamut, I take it. And it's yeah. more of the, those, uh, parasites have probably been doing damage for years. It's going to take time to get rid of them. Yeah. After the three month cleanse, do you have people get like on a maintenance level just to keep it yes. in their body? Yes. So well, I will, I will say this post post pandemic. Um, I have seen such an influx in how our bodies respond to things. Um, and so in affiliation with other doctors, which I absolutely love and talking to them and wanting to gain clarity one of the one of the things pre-pandemic that I would have said, very common, pick six months, pick, um, for me, it was June and December, pick two months of the year that are six months apart and do a cleanse. That It's just helpful to keep things primed and moving, keep the body um, proactive instead of reactive. Post-COVID, Dr. Taylor, I literally have changed the format of doing what I do. And I'm telling people, guys, listen, Every single day, we use we have this thing which we all understand: herd immunity, life on life. Uh, we need it. We need to build up our immune systems. This is the way the Lord created it, so we could do it this way. But because of the environmental stressors that are represented now, 
our immune systems are broke down to the point that when we do this life on life, we keep getting further and further behind the eight ball. We feel like we can't get traction. We feel like we're always two steps behind the brain fog, the fatigue, the hair loss, the headaches, um, the, the getting sick every other month. I mean, I just had a, a, a lady from Canada yesterday and she just told me, I am so sick of it with women. It has been weight gain. It has been hair loss. It has been brain fog. Um, malaise and fatigue that is, you can't just get ahead of it. So understand this is our world now that we live in. And this whole life on life thing, if we are not detoxing continually, I feel like we are always behind a step behind. And so I have literally restructured what I do. And I'm telling people, guys, the bottom line is this, it's the A, B, C, D's of homeopathy, always be continually detoxing something all the time. It doesn't have to be expensive. I mean, I have got a liver, uh, a liver drainage supplement that's $28 for 60 days. It's not that it has to be uber expensive. It's not that it has to be um, some, some high level protocol, but we have to constantly be detoxing i feel now which is much different than three years ago right and you can just you customize your programs based upon what their goals are what their needs are and it can just vary some people want to get they want to get better as soon as possible others are hey i'm in it for the long haul so let's take our time with it and uh so that's nice how you're accommodating like that so well how how can our audience uh get a hold of you what's the best way for them to to reach out to you and uh, uh, talk with you about some of these issues that we were talking about in, in further depth. If so many people are dealing with all these symptoms that you're dealing with. Yes, it's and, absolutely uh, become an epidemic. It's beneficial to at least have a conversation with you about, you know, maybe the, a parrot, an overrun, a body that's yep. overrun with parasites is causing their problems. And it's, uh, they can talk with you about some options about handling that. So how can they get a hold of you? Well, I, I have a website um, and they can go to www.healthybydesignofjupiter.com. Um, that will give them phone numbers. Um, that will give all of my uh, information, my education, what I do. Um, they can email me. Um, they can call the office. So everything is available to them um, online. Uh, and I would say that would probably be the best um, avenue to go to get a hold of me. That's great. Well, uh, this has been a fascinating show, April. Thank you so much for enlightening us on the issues of parasites. We just don't think about these things. Nobody's talking about it, like you say. And a lot of people don't realize how badly these are affecting their health. And so I'm glad that you're a resource that people can reach out to that um, you, you may be able to really help them in great degrees by addressing some of these issues. So thank you for being on our show. Thank you so much for having me. It was my joy. All right. Thank you so much. This is Dr. Derek Taylor signing off for the Taylor Method for Pain-Free Living podcast. Our guest has been April Torres, holistic health coach. And uh, I've heard so many great things from all our patients that have uh, seen you and, and have been utilizing your services. And so we're just happy that you were able to share your knowledge with us. And thanks again. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Taylor Method for Pain-Free Living podcast. For more information about the Taylor Method and how you can find lasting pain relief, visit www.drderektaylor.com. That's www.drderektaylor.com.